Many of you have probably heard of FabFilter. It's a plugin company that has some pretty amazing tools that I use all the time when I'm mixing and mastering music. The one in particular that people really seem to love is their EQ called the Pro Q3. Now, does this EQ sound any different from any other EQs? Not necessarily. However, it does have every single feature you could ever possibly want on an EQ. It's also really easy to use and looks pretty awesome. But there's one feature that a lot of people either overlook or they don't quite understand how to use it or they're using it wrong. And that's when you activate the dynamic portion of the plugin. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you five different ways of how you can use that dynamic band on the Pro-Q3 plugin to fix some major mixing problems that a lot of us run into. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to spend money on unnecessary plugins or expensive analog gear. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week. It's gonna help you level up the quality of your music. Now, a lot of the concepts in this video today are gonna be applicable to other dynamic EQs. So if you don't have the FabFilter Pro-Q3 plugin, that's totally okay. And in fact, if you want some recommendations for some really, really good free plugins that you can use in your sessions, I have a complete comprehensive guide on all of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins, and I have a link to download that PDF in the description. So if that sounds interesting to you, or you just need some new tools, definitely go and check that out. So back to FabFilter Pro Q3. Let's take a look at what the interface is so I can show you how to activate this dynamic band and then we'll use it on a session that I mixed and mastered to showcase the power it has to fixing problems in a really, really transparent way. I wanna give a shout out to the band Eden Rose who let me use this track in this tutorial. So if you liked what you heard, definitely go and check out some of their music. I have links to all that in the description as well. So here's the basic layout for FabFilter Pro Q3. You can just double click on this horizontal line to activate any type of EQ band you want. Now. The dynamic portion is actually hidden in this outer ring down here. So if you click on this ring and you pull it down, you can see that this there's another band that appears. Okay, this is basically setting the dynamic range of our dynamic EQ. And if you're not sure what a dynamic EQ even is, I just released a video, put a link to it up here somewhere. Uh, that'll explain the differences between a dynamic EQ and maybe a multiband compressor and go into the details of what this exactly does. If we go and adjust the dynamic range portion of this, we now can set the frequency range at which we want to increase the volume, just like an EQ, once it exceeds a certain threshold. And Pro-Q3 has this automatic threshold feature, which will basically go and determine a good setting point for you automatically, so it's great. So this can either go up or down, which means that at this frequency, if the level of the audio exceeds a certain threshold, we're gonna add in this EQ proportional to how much it goes over the defined threshold, okay? Which means that this is actually gonna act as almost like an exciter or an expander, but in this frequency range. It's pretty cool. Let me show you what that sounds like on a vocal. We put this up really high. You can see how the EQ is kind of bouncing up and down. That's because of this threshold. So if we go click this auto button right here, we can set our threshold for when we would increase the volume of this band with respect to the audio that's coming in. I am still around. I will find a way to clear my mind. Take this time and drive all night. So now you can hear we're kind of accenting the really sharp initial sounds of the vocal. We can do the opposite by lowering this dynamic band down here. And now when the threshold's exceeded, it's gonna pull those frequencies out. And what this allows us to do is very carefully control the amount of frequencies in a given range. Okay, so let's shorten this up a little bit and play the vocal back. Gone 
guess I'll move on. So I'm way overdoing this just so you can hear the sound of this dynamic EQ. But what this allows us to do is very carefully hone in on the sibilant frequencies of a vocal and make it not as harsh. Okay, so let's go over here where the vocals are sibilant. And then we can take our standard EQ and boost it to find the really harsh frequencies. Okay, so in the meantime, let's deactivate our dynamic band and just find the harshest area. I will find a way to clear my mind. Like this is really painful to listen to. So we'll set the EQ there and let's enable our dynamic band and we can actually lower this back down to zero. And now this will just suck out any of those really sharp frequencies like a de just in this region. And now we can control the Q, we can control the threshold. Okay, and really, really pull out those frequencies in a transparent way. So that sounds pretty good to me, but now the vocals are kind of a, l a little on the dull side, right? This is working it really cool. We can then just take this EQ and boost it up a little bit or make it a little bit wider. And so now we're actively boosting the air part of the vocal or at the same time attenuating any of the sibilant parts, okay? So we're gonna get an airier vocal that's not harsh. Check it out. If that's still too bright, you can just make this dynamic band a little bit bigger or you just lower it by this knob here. That sounds awesome. So that's how you can use Pro-Q3 to act not only as a de but also add a little bit of air while still attenuating any of the overly harsh tones. It's amazing. Let's take a look at what it sounds like on a drum bus that might be a little bit muddy. Okay, so I've loaded up Pro Q3 onto this drum bus. So this is what it sounds like without any of this. All right, so there's, there's this like muddiness to this that I can hear. Um, and it's right around like the 100 hertz region. But here's the issue. With 100 hertz, that's where a lot of the top end power comes from the kick and some of the really meaty low end of the snare comes from. So if we go to try to clean up those frequencies, we might sacrifice some of the power from the kick or the snare. And also, if you have a tom fill, what ends up happening is that's where like the power is on the toms. So if we come in here, let me, for example, and just try to scoop out some of the 100 hertz using a normal EQ, this is what's gonna happen. Okay, let's listen. So it's those frequencies, right? They don't sound that great, these. So let's go and cut that out. Just gave it a lot more space now, right? But watch what happens when we have a tom fill, right? Let me go to a spot here. The toms have no power, right? That sounded terrible. Right, it's all treble, right? Toms usually have a little bit more body to them than that. Check this out, because this is where dynamic EQs are amazing. We can use this to basically sculpt the tone of the drums with the regular EQ, and then, because we're concerned about the transients of the toms or the body of the toms, and the transients of that punch, the kick, and the snare, we can take that dynamic band and actually increase it back up to where the zero line is. So now, when we have really loud, punchy elements like a tom fill, something like that, this EQ will stop cutting the frequencies and then return everything back to where they were. Okay, so for the tom fill, then we get the body back. When the kick drum hits, we're gonna get more of that body back on the kick. And then in between the kick and snare, we're gonna have a little bit more of a scoop sound there that's gonna help give it a little bit more sense of space. So check this out.
you can hear the tone of the kick drum coming back, right? We get a little bit more punch, there's a little more power there, but it still feels more open. And how about those toms? Let's listen, listen to that. Okay, let's listen to just the toms. Okay. Without that dynamic band. With it. So that's where you get your body back. Now, I'm only doing a few dB here. If you start doing bigger cuts, like for general tone sculpting, you get a way bigger impact to the sound. All right, let's check out how to use Pro Q3 on drum cymbals when they get a little bit loud and unruly. Okay, so here is the EQ I'm doing to clean up the drum cymbal track. Let me play that for you. Okay, so that crash kind of has this harshness to it. Let me show you the range where it's harsh. Yeah, it's in here, right? Listen, especially on that crash. Okay, so we want to clean that up, but we don't want to just punch a big hole, right? If we just use an EQ and just pull out a bunch of those frequencies, listen what it sounds like. It definitely sounds smoother, but the hi-hats now kind of sound strange, right? Kind of sounds like there's a hole in the sound of the hi-hats. So instead of just digging this out, let's put that back and then use that dynamic band to tuck out some of the harshness when that crash cymbal hits. Okay, like right there. Now I think this is attenuating way too much, so let me back off on this a little bit. And let's also go back in here and adjust the threshold so that it only pulls out those frequencies when the crash hits and not all the time. Okay, so that's a little bit better right there, okay? And if we want even more control, what you can do is actually come over to the, the track where it's just the crashes and put Pro Q3 on that track. Okay, so let's do that. Let's come over here. And there we go. Now when we play this back. You can see that the dynamic band is activated when that crash hits, okay? And if that's too much, again, we can kind of hide the fact that we're attenuating those frequencies by just putting a slight boost here. Okay. It's going to make it feel airier without harshness. It's amazing. And the last place that I want to show you to use this dynamic band is actually on muddy guitars. All right, so if we listen to these guitars, they kind of sound a little bit muddy, right? Like right in here. So here's the beauty again with the dynamic EQ is let's make this a little bit wider and then we'll activate the dynamic band, pull this down, and then let's widen this out. And actually with FabFilter Pro Q3, you can change the shape. So you can actually do something like a low shelf. Okay, and this is perfect for sucking out any guitar cabinet resonance or rumble out of a guitar track is to use this low shelf feature and then activate this dynamic band, okay? And then we can change the cue to really focus in on a certain region that might be a little bit more rumbly than another, but um, let's just keep it simple for right now and keep it like a cue of one, okay? So now let's click on this auto button and then we'll just adjust this threshold to find that sweet spot then on the guitars where it pulls out enough of that rumble but doesn't make the guitar sound weak. Here we go. So here it is without it. Okay. 
So you can hear when we have Pro-Q3 dynamic band in there pulling out some of those low frequencies that we get a lot more clarity with the guitars in the mix. And because it's a dynamic EQ, it never makes guitars feel like they're not powerful. And anytime you have like a lot of palm muting, the song doesn't have a lot of that, but when you do, you will really, really hear the difference. And it's gonna make those palm mutes super tight without losing power. Awesome for punk rock music and metal. So there you have it. That is how you use the dynamic band on FabFilter Pro Q3 and five different ways that you can use it to help fix problem areas of your mix. Was there any one of these five strategies that you thought was especially eye-opening? Please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend or post it to an online group. That way others will also learn how to fix these common problems in a mix with a dynamic EQ. And as a reminder, if you don't have a dynamic EQ or you just want some other really awesome plugins, I have a link to download my favorite free mixing and mastering plugin guide. All that information is in the description. Shout out to Eden Rose for letting me use this song on this tutorial. And with that, I wanna thank you so much for your time and attention today as always, and I hope to see you in another video.